there, my name is Kelly Dell with Off the Beaded Path, and this is November 8th, 2018. So, for today's video, this was actually supposed to be the start of a new Must Know Monday series, but with every Halloween and everything that we had going on last week, it just did not happen. So, I want to start today a brand new video series all about three drop peyote stitch. So today I'm going to show you a brand new free design that I have available on my website which is off the beaded path beadstore.com for an even count three drop peyote stitch. And then Monday which will be November the 12th I'm going to show you how to do odd count three drop peyote stitch. Then on November the 19th, I'm going to show you how to use a slide tube clasp. I've gotten several questions about those, so I thought it was a great time to go ahead and address it while we were in that series of videos. So for today's video, you are only going to need three colors of Delicas. For this specific design, I made it into a holiday theme, but you can really do it any color and it's going to be really pretty for any time of year. The first color I'm going to use is DB202, that's the size 11 Delica, which is a white Delica. The second color is going to be DB605, which is going to be an 110 silver lined green Delica. And a DB602, which is going to be a size 11 silver lined red Delica. So just three colors of Delicas, and then I'm going to be using a size 10 or 12 needle. It does not matter. And you're going to have to use several yards of thread for this. So if it was me, I would probably start out with about three yards of thread. But what I want to show you is I want to show you, number one, how to do three drop peyote stitch, and number two is how to read your word graph for three drop peyote stitch. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the bracelet that I want to show you how to do today through this video. This is a pattern that can be found free on my website, which is off the beaded path beadstore.com. And although I've chosen to do it in Christmas colors, you can do these in any colors that you would like. The cool thing about this is that also you can see I've really had fun with my clasp as well using the 3D triangle video and my toggle video to make the clasp. You can use any sort of clasp you would like for this bracelet. But the point today is to show you three drop peyote stitch. So if I get this up close here, you can see the reason this is called three drop is because everything is going to be in sets of three. So I have my beads laid out. A is going to be white, B is going to be my silver lined green, and C is going to be my silver lined red. And I have done those from my pattern. And so you can see here that your A is going to be nine grams, B you're going to need four grams, and your C is going to be one gram. So when you download the free pattern, you're going to get the graph chart and the word chart that goes along with this. And at the very end of the pattern, I show you a picture of my finished bracelet. And I also tell you, um, you know, I say for this bracelet, I chose to use my 3D uh, triangle pattern to complete the toggle clasp. And I tell you exactly my pattern that I did. I did 1A and 11B three times. And then um, for the toggle bar, I did even count peyote for 12 beads. So you can get all the information on my website for that. But now to start, one thing that you need to understand is that the number that is in the parentheses is going to be the amount of beads you're going to pick up. The letter next to that parentheses is going to be the letter of your bead that you're going to pick up. So for my very first row, I'm going to be picking up 24 A beads. Now this is even count peyote, and I know that because 24 is an even number. If I would have had 23, 25, that's an odd count and an odd number, so I would know to do odd count peyote. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to thread on one bead, and I've got it kind of just over here for now. This is going to be my stop bead. 
but I also want to leave enough that when I get ready to go back and add my clasp, I'll have plenty of room to do that. So I'm gonna leave about 12 inches and I will go back up through this same bead and pull this thread through. So this is my stop bead. That was number one, so I'm gonna pick up 23 more of these white beads real quick. So I have my 24 beads here, and I've double counted them to make sure I had 24 beads. So that is number rows one and two are complete. The L just means that I picked up my beads and I worked here from left to right. So now, Number three is an R, so it means I'm going to be working from right to left, and it's got 12A here. So that means for my total row, I'm going to be picking up 12 beads. But in three drop peyote, we are going to pick up three beads at a time. So I'm going to pick up 3A, okay, and I'm going to zoom in just, just a little bit here so you can see a little bit better. Zoom in a little bit more. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna skip the very last three that I put on there, and then I'm gonna go through three beads. So one, two, and three. So I have three threaded, I'm going to skip three, and I'm going through three. So if I hold those three right there, and I pull right now, you get something that looks kind of funny like this, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna do three more. Well, that's not the color I want. Pull them out here so you can see me do it. So I'm picking up three A's. Again, I'm gonna skip three. So I'm gonna one, two, three, and then I'm gonna go through three. So I'm coming out, I'm gonna skip three, and I'm gonna go through three. So again, when I pull that, Now your piece will look as so. And if it's not all the way up, all you have to do is just pull that thread and it'll pull all your beads back up to your stop bead. So again, I'm gonna be picking up three beads here. I'm going to skip three from where I'm coming out. So one, two, three, and I'm gonna go through three. One, two, and three. Pull that on through. Okay, so at this point, this is what I've got. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one more time here. So let me grab some more little beads so you can see. So I've got my three. I'm going to skip three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna go through three, which are my very last three. I'm gonna put my finger on there and then I'm gonna pull that thread so that now, total, I added three, six, nine, 12 beads, just like my pattern told me. Okay, so that was row three. So now row four and row five are both 12A. So that means total, I'm gonna be picking up 12 of these white beads, but I'm gonna be picking them up again, three at a time. So this time I'm working back in the other direction. So I'm gonna be picking up three and I'm gonna be coming through these top three. It's gonna be these last three that I threaded on. I'm just going just through those three. I'm gonna pull that through. Okay, then three. And I'm gonna come through the next set of three me get these comfortable here in my hands. So I'm going through the next three that are sticking up. Okay, and you can see what's happening here as I'm adding those sets of three. So again, I'm doing three and I'm gonna come through the next set of three here. my finger on that and go ahead and pull and then three more and again I'm going through this last little set of three 
on the very end. So at this point, this is what your piece will look like. So we have to do one more row of just the A's. So I'm going to grab me some more of those and put them over here. Okay, so I'm going to pick up three of these A's. This time I'm working back in the other direction. So I'm going to go through the three beads sticking up here on this end. then three. And I know people are going to ask, if you do not want to use Delicas, you can use regular size 11 seed beads, but that is going to make your bracelet wider and probably a little bit longer than my finished bracelet. And your pattern may or may not turn out really great. Sometimes when you use round beads, if they're not really, really consistent, it can mess up the pattern a little bit and the pattern will look a little bit different. So just be aware of that. All right, so now that is this, um, what they call my fifth row. And how I know this, now we're gonna count these, start at the little tail here, and we are gonna count these in set of threes at a diagonal. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four. All right, so again, and you can count them on this side as well, and this side actually might be better off to count. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that is my fifth row. Yep, fifth row. Yep, so one, two, three, four, and five. If I count from the tail, that would work as well, but you can see that it shows I have one row less. If I count here, which is my thickest part here on this end, you'll get the accurate count of one, two, three, four, five rows. Okay, so row six, now it changes up a little bit. It says we're gonna pick up five A, one C, and six A. So you can lay these out if you want to. So five A, so one, and I'm just gonna lay these out, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then one C, which is a red bead, and then it tells me 6A. Oh, yep, 6A. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so these are the total beads that I'm gonna pick up for the row. If I had never done this before, I could leave these here and slide my finger out and pick these up three at a time. So I would have it says five total, so one, two, three. And I'll go through here. Okay, so that was three white, and it told me I was gonna pick up five total. So that's four, five, and then my one C. And this is where I'm gonna go through the next set of three. Now I'm going to pick up three because I'm back to my A's again according to my pattern. And then one, two, and three. So here's my pattern so far. If I start out here with the widest point, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And that was my sixth row. So row seven, I'm gonna be picking up 10A, 1C, and 1A. So if you want to, you can count out 10As. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Then one C, and then one a. So this is what I'll be picking up, and again, it's three at a time to pick up my three, and I'm going to go through the next three, then three, go through the next three, three, four, 
three, go through the next three, and now if you'll notice, now here I'm left with one A, one C, and one A. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up those three according to that pattern, and then go through this last set of three for the row so that when I pull it through, now this is what my design looks like. So now, let's see, that was row seven. Row eight is 12 A's. So I think you're kind of getting the gist of how this works. I'm gonna do this last row here one more time so that you can see how to go ahead and continue on with your graph. So I'm just gonna pick up three more, go through three, and three, then go through three, three, each time I'm picking up three and I'm going through three. So then I need three more here. So that now, this is what I have, and I'm gonna go ahead and count my rows. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's eight rows here. Now the ninth row, when I get to here, I'm just gonna start counting them in a diagonal in this direction, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna continue on till I get rid of my thread shorter so I can show you how to actually finish off your thread and add new thread. So I've continued until I've got just a little bit of thread left here. I could probably do one more row, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and add my thread. So I'm gonna actually take the needle off of this end, and for now, I'm gonna leave that thread. I'm gonna thread a needle onto a new piece of thread, completely new. And basically, with this thread, I've left this one because I want to have this new thread come out right here where the old thread is at. So for this, I'm just gonna pick a random spot, and let me zoom in here so that you can see. I'm just gonna pick a random spot to start. So I'm gonna start up here near the top and I'm gonna pull this thread and I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a tail here. And I'm gonna hold on to that. So then at this point, I'm just going to zigzag. So I'm gonna come right down through the stack right next to the one I'm coming out of. And then I'm gonna go right back up through that same stack again. And now I am just going to take this thread, pull it tight here. Now I'm just gonna take this thread and start weaving it down to where it's coming out of this last stack of beads here that I added. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm locking in this thread as I work my way down. I don't like to put any kind of knots in peyote stitch, any type of peyote stitch, because anywhere you put a knot, if you're not careful, you're going to see that. And I don't want to ruin a really nice piece of beadwork with a knot that you can see. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to stitch it down. And this is pretty much, I mean, now this is pretty much how I end all of my pieces, whether I'm finishing them off or I am adding new thread, I pretty much am just stitching through and getting rid of thread or doing this procedure to add thread. So I'm going to come all the way down to that last little stack of beads. So if I tug on this piece right here 
and the tail that I have in my hand moves, then I'm going to know that this thread is not secure and I need to continue to secure it. Otherwise, I can just trim this off. But now because I know how I am and um, how um, OCD, I guess I say I can be about these things, I'm going to go ahead and put my needle on this little short tail thread and I'm going to stitch through some beads to get rid of some more of this tail thread. You know people always ask me you know how do you get rid of thread? How do you add thread? And this is this is just the way that I do it. It's not going to come apart because as far as threads coming loose because we've stitched through the beads so many different times in so many different ways that you don't really have to worry about that happening. So now I can take my cutters or scissors or whatever and I can trim off that short tail thread there so that this is what it looks like. Now I can take my shorter piece of thread here this was my this was my old working thread and I can thread that needle here and then I can get rid of this thread and again I'm just going to start stitching through I'm going to lock it into place by just going through a few beads here I'm going to get rid of this thread and then that way I can just continue to work. The biggest thing is it really doesn't matter how you go through as long as you don't see the threads. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thread through and I'm going to get rid of this short thread that I've got and then I'm going to continue with my new working thread that I just added. So once you've done your three drop peyote stitch and you have the entire length, then you're finished basically if you want to be. I want to show you though how you can add some little edging here around the these two edges to kind of jazz it up a little bit. I've already put this in because I'm going to show you how to attach the, um, the other end here with this extra thread. So what I've done is I'm coming out of the very first stack of beads here on the end. And I'm going to be using some size 15 and some 3 millimeter bicones. So let me pull a few down here. So I'm going to pick up a 15, a 3, and a 15. I'm going to skip one stack and I'm going to go down through the very next stack. So skip one, go through one. So it gives me a little crystal there. So then if I come up through the very next stack, pick up my 15, my 3 millimeter, and my 15, skip one stack and come down through the next stack. I'm only working through the stacks on this side of the bracelet. So then come up through the next one. And I'm just going to continue adding a 15, a 3 millimeter, and a 15, skipping one stack and going down through the next stack. And I'm going to do this all the way down on this side of the bracelet. Okay, so I've gone all the way down this one side, adding my little three millimeter embellishments. And you can see here on the very end that I only have, I'm coming out of one stack and then I only have one stack left here. So to sort of finish that off so that it's not just an empty stack, I'm gonna pick up three of my 15s and I'm gonna come right down through my very next stack of beads. So that way, it still looks like there's something there. Now, my tail thread. If you don't have enough of your working thread here, you can use your tail thread to actually go ahead and do your um, rest of your embellishments and your clasp. But for me, I've got plenty left over. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the thread out from this stop bead and I'm going to weave this thread through and get rid of this tail thread. 
Okay, so I've gone all the way down, adding my little three millimeter embellishments. And you can see here on the end, I actually didn't have enough room to add one more embellishment. So I just did three little size 15 seed beads. Now I've also gone ahead and gotten rid of my tail. I'm not gonna use my tail right now just because I have so much working thread left over. But if I didn't have much left over, I would be using that tail thread to add my clasp. So let's talk clasp for a moment. So you can see here on this sample, would this be an even count um, three drop peyote stitch? There's not a single bead line that we can add our clasp to. It's gotta be centered. So I centered it over the middle two sections of my three drop to add my toggle bar and my toggle loop or triangle here for this matter. For this one, I wanted to do a little bit different. I wanted to add a little bit of length to what I had on here. So I'm going to actually center this the best way I can. And in a few weeks, I'm gonna show you another way that you could actually finish this off. So if I laid this flat here and I laid down, well, let me get all this out of the way. I'm just making a hot mess. If I lay this down, and I center it the best that I know how over my piece, it looks like I'm gonna be connecting at certain beads here along the way. So let me slide it a little bit. Okay, and that's where I want to connect. So for this first little loop that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come out of this first bead of my second set of three here from the right. I wanna add a little bit of length to it. You can see here on this end, I actually did three, or three 11s, then I came through the loop and added a bicone. I wanna add a little bit of length, so I'm gonna put on the bicone first. We can't put these on the top here because if we put these on the top, it's gonna stop me from being able to press down on that and you don't want that. So I'm gonna put that on, then a size eight seed bead and a size 11 seed bead. I'm gonna drop this back in place. I'm gonna skip the 11 and I'm gonna come back down through the eight, the loop, my bicone, and then I'm gonna come back through the same bead that I started with so that now there will be a thread on each side of that size 11 seed bead. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna reinforce this again. If you have plenty of thread left over, it's really best if you can reinforce it several times, but if you don't have a whole lot, then that's fine too. So I'm gonna just keep coming on down through here. And then I'm gonna stitch to where my next speed point will be. So if I lay it back again like I wanted it here, it looks like I'm gonna come out around the middle of this set of beads. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna put on the bicone and I'm gonna go through my loop and then I'm gonna do an eight and an 11. Skip the 11, go back down through the eight and the bicone. Now, I wanna make sure, I might have to do a little something different right here because it looks like that might not press down good. So let me pull this back up. And the fun, the fun part about bead weaving is so that you can figure out how to fix half the time, I swear. Okay, so pull the eight off. I think we'll try three 11s and see what happens there. Make a little peacoat. Well, there went my needle. I have no idea where that thing went. So thread it back here. So one, two. One, two, three. Okay. Then I'm gonna go right back down through the loop and the bicone. And now let's check it. 
see what happens now. Oh yeah, that's gonna be much better. So if I wanted to, I could do the same thing here. I could do this all the way down if I wanted to. It's completely up to you and how you like to do it. But then I'll just come back through this same 11 again. And then I'm gonna reinforce this and then attach this clasp. And then at that point, I'll be ready to work all the way down to add my bicones just like I did here on this side. So here I have this one completely finished. So now you can see what it looks like with embellishments and without the embellishments here. And ultimately, I ended up going back and taking the middle off of this piece and I can actually use my clippers and kind of clip that off just because of the fact I was afraid I would have trouble pushing that down and getting this bracelet off. So you can see the difference in the clasp and even in your colors that you use. This is the color scheme that will be in the kit if you choose to purchase one of our kits. Today, I did use my No More Oops bead tray that can be found at lakesidejewelry.etsy.com. And if you use the coupon code Kelly Tray in the comment box, she refunds your shipping price um, for this piece. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to do even count three drop peyote stitch while learning to make a brand new bracelet. We do have kits available for this bracelet, which can be found at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com or if you go on our website, again, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, we have the free download available for this bracelet where you can use your own colors. So thanks so much for watching and be sure and catch us on Monday when we're gonna be talking about odd count three drop peyote stitch. Have a great one, bye. Thank you.